Hi everyone, this is Divya Vani, working as an assistant professor in CSE department in Institute of Aeronautical and Engineering. So today's topic is uh, discussing about the finite automata. So in the last class, we have discussed about a sim uh, building blocks of the finite automata and today we are discussing about the finite automata. Right? Now we are going to discuss about a model and behavior of the finite automata. I also told you that a finite automata, we can also call it as a finite state machine. So this is the pictorial representation of how the finite automata is going to be working. So what are the, the how this particular finite automata is going to work is, first of all, it contains a tape. That means I already told that a finite automata is used to read the uh, strings or any patterns. So that means a patterns are nothing but any of the string lengths. So here in order to read that particular patterns, we have a, a, a tape called input tape. So what this tape contains? A tape contains a blocks or a blocks which can, which is placing each and every input symbol in there. Before that, I will be ex explaining you by taking a string here. So this is an input tape which contains a blocks which takes the input symbols in this. So if I take an input string called A, B, B, A, right? If I take an input symbol called A, B, B and A. So always it starts from the left to the right. So in order to represent the left, it, uh, the tip tape, it is a left. We represent it by using the symbol called phi by using a symbol called phi and the right end marker by using the dollar. So this we call it as a left end marker, end marker and this one we call it as a right end marker. So in these, between these, we used to place the string what we are going to read. So here, what is the string that we are going to read is A, B, B, A. So let me place that A, B, B, A and or else if I take A, B again, A, B, A. So this is the string that I am going to read. So how this finite state machine will read the input symbols that are placed in this tape one by one. So in order to read this uh, particular tape, we need a reading header, right? So that one we call it as a reading header, right? This is called a tape reader, reading the input symbols which are present in the uh, string. So this is called a reading header, which is attached to a finite control, which is attached to a finite control. So what is the duty of this reader, reading header? This reading header will read the input string one by one and it reaches to the right end marker and it will check whether the input string is correct or whether the input string is valid or not. So how this entire finite automata will be working is a system is present, a finite machine, finite automata is there. Whenever if you give an input, right, whenever if you give an input, it has to define whether it is a valid input or not a valid input. So this is what the entire this finite automata will do. So it will read the entire length string and decide whether the string is a valid string or not a valid string. So this reading header first it points to the left end marker. That means it will decide itself. It is the starting of that particular uh, tape, right? Then after it moves to the right. So first right. So at a time it reads only one one input at a time and it moves to the finite control. So in what is a finite control it contains? In finite control it contains the states which carry one input from one state to the another state. So if you have a Q0 as a start state, let us take Q0 as a start state and on seeing A, 
it should move to the another state called Q1. So now my uh, finite control is on state Q1. On next, on seeing B, it moves to the another state called Q2. Right? On seeing B again, it moves to the another state called Q3. Right? On seeing B A again, it moves to the another state called Q4. On seeing uh, A again, it moves to the another state called Q5. And on seeing B, it moves to the another state called Q6. Right? And now my because my reading header reaches to the uh, right end marker. That means uh, we have read in the entire string. Now I have to check whether the Q6 state is a final state or not. If it reaches to the final state, that means it the particular input string is a valid string. Or else if that particular string does not reaches to the final state, that means the, fine, uh, the string whatever I have read is not a valid string. Right? So, if I have a string called A, B, B, A, A, B, A, A again. So, here I have read only till the B. I have one more A, but it is but it is not present in the tape. So, that means it may not reaches to the state called Q7, that is a final state. So, that means that particular string is not a valid state. So, this is how this a finite state or machine or a finite automata will be working. Okay, so the next one we are going to learn about a, a, a finite automata. See, finite control, how it works? Finite control decide the next state on receiving a particular input. So, by taking the one input, it will decide where it has to go to the next state. From The tape reader reads the cells only one by one. Only it takes the tape reader, only reads the inputs one by one it or starts from the left and moves towards the right end marker that is what i have written here so what is finite automata okay finite automata is used to recognize the patterns patterns are nothing but a strings that we are taken it takes the strings of a symbol as an input and changes its state accordingly that means if i take an input a that means it starts from Q on seeing on sitting the Q naught state on seeing input A it moves to the some another state called Q1. That is the meaning of this. A string of a symbol as a string of a symbol as input and changes its states accordingly. So based on the number of inputs, it changes the number of the states. When the desired symbol is found, that means if I reach reads the entire string A, B, B, A. Decide symbol is found, then the transition is okay. That means our entire transitions will be completed. At the time of transition, the automata can either move to the next state or stay in the same state. That means, for example, if I was having a transition here, Q0, right? On seeing input symbol A, it can move to the state called Q1 or else on Q0, on seeing an input symbol, it can stays on the same state called uh, Q0 itself. So, this particular thing we call it as a loop, self loop. Right? This means it transits the state uh, A input symbol from one state to the another state. Okay? This one here itself Q0, it takes the input symbols A n number of times. So, this type we call it as a self loop. Okay. So, finite automata have a two states called acceptance state or a reject state. So, what is an acceptance state? That means whenever a particular state reach, for example, if I take an input symbol called AB, AB, right? If I take an input symbol called AB, if I start from the Q0, on seeing A, on I reaches to the Q1 state and again seeing on B, I reaches to the state called Q2. 
So if that Q2 is a final state, that means uh, this particular state we call it as acceptance states. So or else if I have a state string called A itself, here Q0 it reaches to the Q1 itself. So this Q1 is not a final state. So these sort of strings we are called it as a reject states. Even though these, these are belongs to the states, set of states, but this particular type of states we call as a reject states and these sort of states we call as a acceptance states. Final states are nothing but acceptance and all the remaining states we call them as a rejecting states. Okay, when the input string is processed successfully and the automata reach its final state, then it will get accepted. That means whenever an input string is processed from one state to the another state, it has to reach from the, uh, if we take any of the string, it has to reach from the uh, initial uh, start state to the final state, then that particular automata will be accepted or else the particular string will be get accepted in the finite automata. So these are the formal definition of the finite automata. All the finite automatas that what we are having, finite automatas are like nothing but finite automatas, automata, linear bounded automata, Push down automata, <laughs> and last one is a Turing machine. So these all comes under the automatas only. All these comes under the automatas. So these are the formal definitions of the finite automatas. These all four automatas are also contains this five tuple notations. This finite automata it contains a five tuple notation which is denoted by using a capital M. So five tuple notation we call them. These five tuple notations are similar to every finite automata that we are having. So what are those final tu uh, fi five tuple notations are? First one is Q, Sigma, Delta, Q0 and F. So first uh, let us learn one by one. What is Q, what is Sigma, what is Delta, what is Q0 and what is F. So first of all what is a Q? Q is nothing but a finite set of states. Q is nothing but a finite set of states. That means we can contains any number of states, either one state or a two states or a three states. So that is the reason we, we call here finite set of states. So here, this finite state states will be represented by using a circle. Right? Next one is a finite set of the input symbols. Finite set of the input symbols. This finite states, we represent it with the capital letters uh, uh, A, B, C or anything else. Right? And finite set of the input symbols. These are nothing but the string that what we are taking. These finite input symbols, we represent it by using a small letters like A, B, C and so on. Right. Next one is called initial state. Whenever if uh, we are reading a particular string, we start with the initial state. So that particular initial state, we represent it with the Q0. Right. We represent it with the Q0. Right. And F is called the final state where the string uh, reaches to the, uh, when where the string will be ended, that particular state we will be calling it as a final state. And next one is transitions functions. These are nothing but whenever a particular string is carrying from one state to the another state by using a, uh, a transitions, right? By using these arrow symbols, we represent the 
transition. So that all comes under this transition functions. So then what is the difference between this finite automata to the remaining finite automata means each and every finite automata is containing all these phi tuple notations but the different comes to the transitions functions itself. It will be different from the one finite automata to the another finite automata. Okay clear student. Next one a finite automata. This finite automata is basically divided into two types or else we uh, represent this finite automata in two types. One is a transition diagram and another one is called a transition table. So first of all transition diagram and transition table. The first of all let us learn about the transition diagram. In transition diagram we contains a set of vertices and edges. What we contains in a transition diagram? We contains vertices and edges. So what is these vertices? As we have learned in the previous finite set of states. These states we represent in the vertices by using a sim circle. So if the uh, uh, st uh, finite states, here finite states we are having, a finite set of states. So if we are having a state called A, state called B and state called C. Right. So these A and B states will be represented in the circuits. So we call them as a st states. Right. The next one is called edges. So edges are nothing but these input symbols, the set of input symbols are carried on the edges. These input symbols are carried on the edges. How they will be carried? But, uh, these input symbols are represented by using a small letters. So by using in this way or by using this way. That means from one state it moves the, uh, to the another state in this way or else from one state to the another state it moves to in this way. So the, this is how the edges will be present. The vertices of a transition diagrams are called as the states and edges are called as the input symbols of the finite automata, what we have discussed here. So there are different types of states in the finite automata, right? So as here we are representing the vertices as a states. So in these states itself, we are having a different types of states. So those states are called as a first one is initial state, final state, and a dead state. As we have read here, it, it contains a two states, only a acceptance state and reject state, right? All the initial states, all the initial states or a, a common initial states, every state we call it as a acceptance state rather than the final state. Final state we call it as a uh, acceptance state. So if how this initial state will be represented, the initial state will be represented by using an arrow mark with the uh, vertices pointing to the vertices, arrow mark pointing to the vertices. So this is how the initial state will be represented. And a final state will be represented by using the double circuit. If A is a final state, we represent the A by using a double circuit and the dead state. Here dead state is nothing but if I don't want to uh, uh, pass a particular string to the final state, I have to make it to dead. So that in that cases, I send that particular state to the dead state. That means it can't able to reach to the previous states or it cannot able to move to the next stage. Those type of states we call it as a dead stage that we will be discussed in the next topics. So here in the diagrammatical way we have shown this. So this is how the state will be represented and this is how the transitions or uh, edges will be represented and the start state will be represented by using this or else by using the this, this way also we can represent the start state and the final state is represented by using these, right? See that these are the notations of the initial final states, right? So, and in order to learn how the transition diagram we have to draw, 
right a transition is a transition diagram is nothing but we call it as a directed graph so in the directed graph what it contains in the directed graph what it contains now we have learned what it contains it contains in some states and types of the states what are those types initial final and the dead states so how this a directed graph will be located so there is a node of each state in q that right means each and every node be represented with the q with the circle directed edge from node q to the p label so if the uh, if the node a from the state called q it is moving to the a on to the some other state called p so we label it by using the delta of q comma a is equals to p on q in seeing a input symbol it is moving to the another state called p in the start state the arrow with no sources see here this is a start state it contains an arrow which is having the no sources and the final state is represented by using the double circuit so this is how we represent the transition diagram so let me give an example for you how to draw a transition diagram right so what is the constraints here what is the question here construct the dfa construct the dfa which accepts the strings length of 2 over a comma b so here what are the input symbols that they have given we can we represent the input symbols by using the sigma the input symbols are a comma b they have given right the next we have to write the language so according to the question they have asked the dfa which accepts the strings length of 2 the strings length of 2 that means length is equals to 2 string length sorry i should represent the string length with this way by using the string length is equals to 2 that means what are the possible outcomes that i used to get here a a a b b a and b b so now how to draw the dfa or a finite automata it always starts with the initial state how we represent initial state with an arrow mark pointing to the some state with no source right so this is how we represent the finite automata so then which string i have to oh, pass this that means as this language is a finite language we have to take the minimum length string we have to take the minimum length string if the language is infinite language we have to take the sorry if the language is a finite language we have to take the maximum length string and if the language is infinite language language we have to take the minimum length string so as this language is a finite language i should take the maximum length string so what is a maximum length string here we have only one length string called 2 so i can take any of the string so let me take a string called a a so on seeing a if i take in states called a on seeing b a it reaches to the b and on seeing a again it reaches to the c that means i need to make this particular string acceptance so i keep the c as a final state in order to make the a as a final state or acceptance string i have make the c as a final state so then i also need to make the a b as a final um, acceptance string before that each and every input string a should contains a transitions of a of all the input symbols exactly once it uh, every in the state should contains a transitions of each and every input symbols exactly once so this a contains a transition with the a once so a is completed so what about the b 
So what are the possibility of keeping A? Either I can keep in the same loop or else I can move forward to the some another state or else I can send to the some dead state or else I can move to this particular state. So these are many possibilities that I was having. So if I keep the loop here and write the B here, right, group and B, I can also execute the string length greater than 2. I can also execute the string length greater than 2, right. So that means here loop function is ruled out. So if I send it back to the B here, B. So I can execute B and A. B and A, okay, possible. Only two length string is accepted. So if in case if I give here B as a string. So I directly it starts from the start state and reaching to the final state. That means the string length is executing one also. One length string is also being executing. So this particular uh, option is ruled out. Okay, so uh, already B here it is accepted. So no need of sending it to the dead state. Okay, clear. So now uh, A is A is having the input symbols A with the uh, with the small letter A once and small letter B once. So the work of the A is completed. Then coming to the B here. B is an input symbol A along with the C here, right? And it also should contain the B as a input transitions. So either here also we can keep the loop. So if I keep the loop, what it happens? It is accepting more than three two length string. So that is rejected. So if I for keep the string to the C here in this way, right? So this one is accepted. It is taking only a string length of two, right? So now you can also send to the backward. So like this also I can send. So if I send like this, it is accepting the string length more than 2. So therefore, this is rejected. So, so the B also contains an input symbols A and B. So, okay, A work is completed and B's work is also completed. Now coming to the C. C is a final state which it also should contains, even though it is a final state, it also should contains an input symbols of A and B exactly once. So, if I keep A and B in the loop here, it executes the strings greater than or equals to 3. Greater than or equals to 3, the strings will be accepted. But according to my questions, the finite automata only it should accept a string length of 2. So that is the reason why what I am doing rather accept this 2 length string, no other string length should be accepted. So I just simply sending these particular strings to a dead state. So dead state we represent a comma b. So how we can we call this particular state as a dead state? So after reaching the c, so if I wants to re read a string called a a a, right? So what is the length of this string? The length of the string is three. Here. So this particular string should not be executed in this finite automata, right? So on seeing first a, I reaches to the b. On seeing second A, I reaches to the C. And on seeing third A, I reaches to the D. Is the D's final state? No, it is not a final state. So, therefore, this particular string is not accepted. So, after any number of strings rather than the two length strings, it reaches to the dead state and it rotates there itself. So, that particular sort of states, we call them as a dead states. Okay, next one, till now we learn about the transition diagram and this is how we draw the transition diagram. Clear? The next one is we are learning about the transition table. So, this transition table is nothing but we are representing the transition functions in a tabular form. We are representing the transition table in a tabular form. So, 
in this particular transition table contains a two arguments a states and a symbol it contains a states and a symbol so how this transition table will be represented this transition table contains a rows and a columns rows and columns it represented by using the delta right and the rows corresponds to the states these rows are corresponding to the states so according to this particular dfa or a transition diagram what are the states here how the states are represented the states represented by using the circles right so what are the states here q0 q1 and q2 are the states and the columns corresponding to the symbols what are the symbols input symbols so what are the input symbols on this particular transition diagram 0 and 1 are the input symbols 0 and 1 are the input symbols so how to represent this transition table so on half on c on staying on the q not so before that the q not is a outer represent even though it is a transition table it has to represent all the uh, properties which are present on the transition diagram right so here q not is a initial state so in the transition table we represent the initial state by using an arrow with no source we represent it by using arrow with no source and final state is denoted by using a star and final state is denoted by using a star so now we have to fill this transition table how to fill that so we need to draw write all the transitions of this particular uh, transition diagram so on seeing q not on staying q not on seeing input symbol q0 on seeing input symbol 0 where it is moving where it is moving it is moving to q1 on seeing q0 on seeing 0 it is moving to input symbol q1 next one on seeing on staying on q0 on seeing input symbol 1 where it is moving on staying q0 on seeing input symbol 1 it is moving to q2 right and in the same way on staying on q1 on seeing input symbol 0 on seeing input symbol 0 where it is moving it is moving to q0 and q0 on staying q0 by seeing the input symbol 1 where it is moving it is moving to q2 and on staying q2 on seeing an input symbol 0 where it is moving on q2 itself on c on uh, staying on q2 by seeing an input symbol 1 where it is moving it is moving on the same state called q2 so this is how we represent the transition table right this is how we represent the transition table so this is how see here q0 represent with the arrow mark q2 represent with the q uh, uh, star right this next state of the input for the zero input three state and next state of the input symbol is one so right this is how we need to represent the transition table for any transition uh, diagram okay the next one if i take an example for the previous diagram for this particular diagram so if i draw the transition table how it will be there so if i take q0 a q1 b a comma b a comma b and q2 final state a comma b it reaches to the q3 dead state a comma b so this is the diagram that we have seen in the previous slide so if i wants to draw a transition table for this how i will be drawing this so it contains a states how many state four states 
delta q naught the rows are represents the states q2 and q3 and the columns represents the input symbols a and b right here the start state is represented by using arrow mark and the final state represent by using the star okay q not on a where it is moving q1 q not on b again it moves to q1 q1 on a it is moving to q2 q1 on a b it is moving to q2 and q2 on a it is moving to q3 and q2 on b it is moving to q3 and again q3 on a it is moves to the q3 and q3 on b also it moves through the q3 so this is how we represent the transition table so this is all about your yeah, finite automata and how the def, uh, finite automata model will be working and how the finite automata definition it contains and what are the representations of the finite automata what is a transition diagram and what is a transition table okay Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.